Kreislauf und King, alles war mein Lied. Together we will devour the very God. Take this. Do it. Come on. Hello everyone, I hope you're having a great day. In this video, I will explain in detail how to create the best and most broken Blasphemous Blade build of the entire game. Everyone is talking about this weapon recently and for a very good reason. With the release of the DLC, they included new items that allow you to increase the potential of this weapon to the skies. It doesn't matter if you use this weapon in the DLC or just in the base game. With the setup I'm going to show you today, you will be able to delete your targets in just a few hits and you will be extremely hard to defeat as well. This weapon was already incredibly good and even though it got nerfed before the release of the DLC, it is in my opinion one of the most reliable weapons you can use to deal an insane amount of damage while having a great defense value at the same time. First of all, I will briefly explain the main features of this weapon, I will explain the details of the build and I'm going to test it against the strongest bosses of the DLC and the base game. So without anything further to say, let's set this game on fire! If you don't want to farm runes or materials for your Elden Ring builds, MMOEXP is the best web service where you can easily acquire as much runes and items as you wish for the best price. Use my code CARLOSEN to get a 5% discount on your purchases. Thanks MMO exp for sponsoring today's video okay guys what we have here today is a unique weapon that doesn't need an introduction as it is one of the most popular razors of the base game along with the dark moon razor the blasphemous blade is well known for being the most reliable weapon for every type of player regardless of their skill level it is nothing from the other world it has the basic razor moveset it doesn't have the best range it has a sick design though but what makes this weapon a truly monster is its healing passive effect it allows you to constantly heal yourself while using this weapon it works in two different ways you will recover hp every time you defeat an enemy, it can be a boss or a simple mob. This is especially useful when exploring areas with multiple enemies as you will constantly recover HP each time you defeat one of them. However, the best part of this weapon is its unique skill, Taker's Flame. A powerful attack that consists on a heavy vertical slash and a destructive magma blast that has an insane range. This ability deals purely fire damage and scales only with faith. Anyways, if you are close enough to your target to hit him with a sword, the weapon part will deal physical and fire damage and it will scale with the AR of the weapon. But the most important important part of this skill is the fire blast that comes after the slash, so keep that in mind when using this weapon. In the same way than other popular weapons of the base game, it was nerfed a few hours before the release of the DLC. They reduced the stance damage the fire blast does and removed the knockdown effect on low poise targets like Malenia or regular enemies. Nevertheless, they didn't change the scale values or the damage performance of this weapon at all. Instead, they added tons of items that will allow us to make the Blasphemous Blade even better than it was before. Those are the main features of this weapon, now let's jump straight into the equipment and the stats. I will split this part of the video on the things that we really need to make this build insanely broken and the extra items we can use to make it a little bit more powerful but that are not completely necessary. We need the Blasphemous Blade on plus 10 and any seal we have available to cast our main buffs. And we need the Deadly Poison Performed Bottle, it doesn't need to be upgraded and as you can see we don't need to have the required level of arcane to be able to use this weapon. We are going to be using the Rakshasa's armor set with the exception of the helmet where we are going to use the Mushram Crown. This helmet is going to increase our damage by 10% every time we apply poison on our target on ourselves. The best talismans we can use for this build are the Shard of Alexander, the Kindred of Rod's Exultation, the Fire Scorpion Charm and the Talisman of the Dread. In our Flask of Wonders Physic we are going to use the Blood Sucking Crack Tear and the Flame Shrouding Crack Tear. And this weapon consumes a decent amount of stamina so be sure to craft some Pickle Turtle Legs to boost your stamina regeneration speed. It doesn't matter if you use the well Pickle Turtle Legs of the regular ones. Now I am going to explain briefly how this build works. Before starting each fight we are going to use the skill of the Deadly Poison Perfume Bottle to trigger the effect of the Mushroom Crown and the Kindred of Rod's Exultation. These two items will increase our damage by a total of 30% for 20 seconds. With this entire setup we are going to be dealing a lot of damage with each attack, but it comes with a very interesting problem. If we stack the Blood Sucking Crack Tear with the poison that we apply on ourselves, we are going to be losing a lot of HP in a very short amount of time. But it will not really matter cause thanks to this weapon we are going to be healing each time we use Taker's Flames skill. That's why everyone is talking about the Blasphemous Blade currently. Thanks to its healing properties this weapon is capable of perfectly handling complicated setups like this one, where we are going to be dealing a lot of damage, but we will also need to restore HP constantly. Now I'm going to address the items that are completely optional but that will boost the power of this build a little bit. 
First, we have the Poison Hand. This one is going to increase our damage by 7.5% with each Poison proc, and it is going to stack with the Mushroom Crown and the Kindred of Rot's Exultation. Next, we have the Neutralizing Boluses. This one will allow you to cure the poison. This is very useful if you want to make your HP drain effect slower or if you want to proc poison again while fighting. We can also use oil pots on targets that are highly resistant to fire. When hitting a target with one of these bad boys, we are going to reduce the defense of that target against the fire damage. And finally, we have rope fetid pots. These items are especially useful if you want to proc poison while fighting or against bosses that have two or more faces. In order to obtain the max performance of this weapon and to have an optimal build, we are going to use 50 on vigor, 26 on mind, 40 on endurance, 33 on strength and dexterity, and 80 on faith. Golden Bow and Hall of Shabriti are going to be our main buffs, but Flame Grand Strength is a great alternative too. And I have my Scarlet Blessing on the level 20, and if you want to take this build to the latest part of the DLC, I strongly recommend you to have it in that level as well. Ok guys, now I am going to show you how to use this build. I will try to explain it as clear as possible so you will be able to buff yourself even while you are fighting. First of all, we are going to use Golden Vow and a Pickle Torten Leg as always which is completely optional. Then you have to use your Flask of Wondrous Physic and cast Hall of Shabriri. And as soon as you do it, you have to switch your seal in your rough hand for the Poison Hand. Then you have to use the uh, skill on the Poison Perfume Bottle then switch back to your Blasphemous Blade to hand it, refill your FP and cure the poison. The reason why I'm curing the poison with the neutralizing boluses is because this way we are not going to lose the effect of the Mushroom Crown or the Kindred of Rod's Exultation. However, we will reduce the speed of the HP drain. This way we don't have to wait until the poison disappears by itself. That is going to be really helpful to trigger the buff again while fighting, using the Rope Fetid Pots or if you find it more comfortable, the Poison Perfume Bottle. Now that we have completed and optimized our build, what do you say if we devour the gods together? Here, here, amazing damage baby, and he's done, amazing baby, <laughs> nice, let's go, okay, take this, that is a beautiful hit bro, oh I can deal another one, Beautiful one. <laughs> beautiful one. <laughs> I mean, a beautiful one, bro. <laughs> Maybe there is a beautiful Juan out there, bro. For real. <laughs> this fight is a little bit complicated, but nothing that we can't manage, you know? Nice. Nice hit there. Oh my god. Amazing. <laughs> Let's go! <laughs> Let's go. Okay. Let's do this. Okay. Amazing. Amazing. Let's go, baby! <laughs> this is insane, bro. It doesn't make sense the behavior of this boss right now. But this is gonna work now. Do it! Come on! Let's go! <laughs> Let's go, baby! 